Exchange and welcome to the exchange rate. Yes. Oh, we are live here at the Bill Studios in New York City, and it's my very own talk show. Yes, just me. Uh huh. Yeah. No Trinity. Um, and I want to tell you that this show is going to be uplifting, life changing, inspiring. This, that's a complete fucking lie. Um, but it's so dope that you guys are all here with me because the market may be closed, but the exchange rate is officially open! Oh, yes. So, as you know, I've been up to a few things, okay? Uh, winning All Stars. A Pepsi campaign with Cardi B. A Crest commercial. Figure out how to use the Snapchat baby filter, all those things. But most recently, I just got back from touring Europe. And bitch, let me tell you, the foreskin was real, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But enough about me. We have a great show lined up today. The star of Dear White People, Logan Browning, is here. Uh -huh. And we're going to chat about her creepy crawly new movie, The Perfection. I'm going to take you camping and stick around to the end because Monet talks to Alabama. But first, Let's get into the gig, y'all. Oh, where's my cocktail? Oh, it's here. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Yes, my afternoon tea. That's what I was just drinking. <laughs> Everyone has tea at uh, five. What time? Five thirty afternoon, right? That's real. Um, so there's so much going on in pop culture, and I, I love pop culture. I, I'm not always abreast on all, the, on all the information, but I like to stay as current as possible. And right now, Ms. Cardi B is going through it. Have you heard about this story? <laughs> Cardi B just canceled her whole Memorial Day show because of her botched plastic surgery. Now, when I say botch, and okay, now, for, well, here's the thing. We all, know, we, we all know Cardi B is not a stranger to plastic surgery, right? Yes, we know that. She's been getting plastic surgery up in the Bronx on Tremont Avenue for years. <laughs> <laughs> but now, but because she had her baby Culture, is that, is, is that the baby's name, Culture? Yeah, she had Culture. So after, after the baby, she had a tummy tuck and she had the ab sketching. Is there, do, is there, you, okay, now this is um, some, some, some uh, Annie, Annie Leibovitz Photoshop realness, you can't see it. <laughs> but there, she has this crazy looking etching and she looks like a velociraptor in certain <laughs> pictures. But, so, but, but besides that, she had, she had the tummy tuck, she had the lipo, she had her tits done after the baby to get them bigger like when she was pregnant. Isn't that correct? So she was, I think, it was a size, I forgot to write it down, she was like a size D before, before the surgery. Um, after the surgery, she went up to a, to a double D, a triple D, to get her tits to look even bigger than when she was pregnant. Wild. Um, but so she got the plastic surgery, and then now she was up on some stage twerking her ass off, and then she popped something, something moved, something shifted, something went left. And she canceled her entire memory. Could you imagine you and your girlfriend saving up all your cash? You're like, all right, girl, we gonna go down to El Paso, Texas to go see Cardi B Memorial Day weekend. You have not gone to Chipotle all month. <laughs> you have been saving your, your, dollar, your, your paycheck comes, everything goes, you save all your shit. And then the week before, she's like, psych me, y'all, I ain't coming anymore. So the fans are up in awe. They're up in arms that Cardi B canceled. Clap if you would be upset that Cardi B canceled because of her plastic surgery. Okay, this one lady, she's like, no, she's like, Cardi B can cancel. Ma'am, you, ma'am, you, you, you okay with that? It was a medical reason. No! <laughs> I was sick the other day, but I still went from, I ain't want to, but I did, okay? Yeah, but so, I'm a little upset about Cardi, but it is what it is. She, she, she we, we're still gonna keep on watching her, we still love her, and she's still, like, the meme queen of our fucking generation, right? Ow! Moving on. Now, I have been trying to keep up with this, but on a fact, on account of my um, Spectrum wireless stopped working, 
the James Charles Tati Jeffree Star saga. Make some noise if you're keeping up with this. <laughs> this side, they're like, no. <laughs> Work. Okay. This side of the room is the Shady Queens over here. So James Charles Tati and uh, Jeffree Star, this has been all, there are like 45 minute long YouTube videos and people have been watching every fucking minute of this shit. It is crazy. So it started out with, boom, James Charles goes to Coachella, right? But on date on weekend two, he did not have um, they, they have artist pass and VIP pass. VIP pass, I mean artist pass. You are like no one can no one can like fuck with you. You're, you're with like Beyonce, like ND, non disclosure fantasies. You, you're that. When you're an artist, when you have VIP pass, you're still among the common folk. But it's just people that got a little more bread. You know what I'm saying? So James Charles was only allowed to get a VIP pass for the second weekend because he wasn't like it was he he, he it was a last minute decision. So boom, he gets to Coachella and he's being mobbed. Fans are coming up to him, begging for pictures. They're like, uh, but, so he's like, oh, this is horrible. So he calls his management. He's like, can you please get me an, an, an artist pass some way, shape, or shape, or form? Cut to the girl from Sugar Bear, who is the competing brand for uh, Tati's company. She's like, hey, like very uh, Ursula, lots of medicine. <laughs> She's like, hey, I'll give you an artist pass if you promise to promote my company on your Instagram story. And James is like, she's like, you got a deal? And James is like, yes. <laughs> so James agrees to which pisses off Tati and Tati posts her 45 minute long video by sister destroying James, saying that he, he, uh, that he likes to lure straight men into his, in, in, into his lair to do some crazy things, which I have done to straight men in my life. <laughs> However, we don't talk about it. That's why I don't post my shit. I don't tell nobody. You see me in the... Okay? <laughs> so, she, so she posted her, her, her long video by his sister, which Jeffree Star tagged in. He's like, yeah, James Charles is terrible. He's horrible. He even went on to bully James Charles' little... Like, his kid brother, who is not even of age. He's like, fuck you, stay out of it, you idiot. Like, this is grown people conversation. But then uh, James Charles came back out with his... And by the way, he went from, like... He lost three million subscribers on YouTube because of this whole drama. Now, that is a lot of subscribers. That is a lot of subscribers on YouTube. He lost all these subscribers, and then he just came out with his video a few days ago, basically coming with receipts on receipts on receipts, girl. He was like, actually, and he's posting screenshots of his conversation with Tati, proving that she's lying, screenshots of his shit with, with, with Jeffree Star, proving that he's lying, and Jeffree Star was like, oh shit, I fucked up. Um, JK, James Charles is really a nice guy. He's a well-rounded individual. I love him, he's fierce. And then Tati deleted her video, which had like 80 million views on YouTube. So, and 80 million views, that's bitch, you making a nice check from 80 million views, okay? <laughs> She deleted, the, she deleted her video. James Charles is now back. I mean, let's, he's probably not innocent, Miss Thing over here, but he's definitely been um, exonerated of a lot of uh, um, accusations that we had about her. And now, I think we like him again, yeah? Make some noise if you're back to Team James Charles. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Okay, are you... If you are Team Jeffries, right, no one. She been, she, she been done cancel, girl, stop. <laughs> but also, but we did not know Tati's name until this, all, until this all came out. So I think this was all a fucking... They all probably just wired money back and forth to each other to get this bitch famous again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And it worked, because now we all know who she is. And no lie, I bought a highlight yesterday. So it's <laughs> time. I sure did, girl. You see here? <laughs> Thank you, Tati. <laughs> and that is the tea on that. Oh, I need a sip of my afternoon tea. <laughs> Nails are not easy to function with, girl. Why is there lime in my team? <laughs> Good. Um, next story is, now, make some noise if you know who Jada Pinkett is. Oh, really? I thought it was a joke, like, because I know, I know Jada Pinkett from, uh, from Set It Off. Oh, the one production girl back there, she's like, ah. I know her from Set It Off. I also know her from A Low Down Dirty Shame. Anyone know that movie? All the black people, word. 
<laughs> so that's not her. But recently, she came out about her addiction to porn. That like ha that she she was addicted to porn to, to porn for a very long time. Um, and uh, she's saying that well, I watch her. Do you guys watch her Red Table Talk? Yeah. <laughs> the most ridiculous show on Facebook. <laughs> They're like Willow is like. One time, I used a band aid. <gasps> It's like the most dramatic responses to anything that anyone says on the show. So Jada comes out with her being addicted to porn for, before she met Will, when she was practicing um, abstinence, before she met Will. She was, she was, I, I thought it was while she was with Will. I was like, oh, so that's how y'all do it. Uh, but no, it was before she met Will, and then Willow, in the Red Table Talk, Willow was like, oh yeah, I've been watching porn since I've been 11 years old. And then her mom was like, girl, what? And then the grandmother's like, yeah, girl, we all watch it. We all do it. It's a family affair. No, I'm kidding. They didn't say that. They didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> Not true. Um, but yeah, she was saying her, her issue with porn is that she feels like it just it makes unrealistic expectations for women. Like, right? you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be ready to do it now. You got to be able to do every position. She is like, it just sets unrealistic expectations of, to, to men and women about what sex should be, which is understandable. I mean, but. When I watch Porn Girl, I, I'm, I'm going in knowing that I cannot accomplish any of those things. All right, girl? <laughs> I know that I'm going in to watch porn to recreational activities. But Will, Jada is like, no. She, she's, not saying it's, she's not saying it's the devil. She's just saying that it is not a healthy thing to be addicted to. And I mean, but anything in, in excess is, is, is horrible for you. I mean, I eat Chipotle every day. That is not good for me, but here we are, OK? <laughs> thing, shit happens. And, um, but then the gag was the grandma, um, Adrian, who is, is, it's always Willow, Jada, Adrian, and, 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 and um, the grandma, Adrian, is like, oh, porn has been very helpful for me in overcoming any shameful things that I've been thinking. I've been like, I never thought about using porn as a way to, you know, take away the shame and stigma of things that I may like, like eating Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all. I, I mean, this picture is ridiculous. <laughs> With the laptop. <laughs> that's how I watch porn, too. Um, yeah. Anyway, so Jada, keep on watching your porn. Porn is nice. Tumbled on fucked up porn, but here we are. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. And oh, sorry, one more sip of my afternoon go-go juice. Mm. It tastes so good. Um, oh, do y'all hear about this? This is my, honestly, this is my favorite thing that, that has gone on in the past week. So at Morehouse University, which is a historically black college in Atlanta, um, they're all, all, all these kids, they done finished four years of school. They're sitting down at graduation, you know, for like hour 93. You're like, this is never going to be over. This is some bullshit. The commencement address speaker comes up. His name is Robert Smith. And he, at the end of his speech, he's like, actually, I am going to pay off everyone's student loans who is graduating. <laughs> could you, could, <laughs> make some noise if you have student loan debt. <laughs> could you imagine if, if, a, if, if a wizard showed up at your college and were like, <laughs> Bitch, he Thanos their debt, okay? He was like, <laughs> snap, it's gone. He paid, and it's, it's not like these other people who come into colleges and they start a fund or they, or they start an, 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 an endowment and you can get uh, tuition, help, whatever. He's like, no, every single dollar that you have in, in tuition is going to be gone. He's paying for it. Yeah, you have to pay some taxes and shit on it, but who cares? If I can get rid of my $250,000, yes, that's what I said. So Drag Race literally paid for a third of it, but... <laughs> After taxes, more like one sixteenth of it. Okay, <laughs> I would be so happy and over the moon. So that's all gone. But people are now commenting on Oprah's page, like, "Where you at, Oprah? What you go do? <laughs> Ain't that something? You cannot win for losing this country." <laughs> Oprah is at home with Stedman and Gale, watching the Game of Thrones finale, and she opened her Twitter and they're like, "Oprah, where you at?" And Oprah is like, "Girl, I am just living my life. Leave me alone." After Oprah has literally given America everything ever, she's like giving us cars, she gave us TVs, she gave us Jack LaLanne juicers. <laughs> Millennials, y'all don't know. 
uh, the Jack Lil' Juicer was, the, when my mom saw the episode, she was like, fuck that bitch. <laughs> I should have been there. Um, but yeah, but this is this man, Robert Smith, and that is pretty dope that he just paid off an entire graduating class of student loans. But, so that's pretty fierce, and I wish that I could meet this man and we can watch some porn together, because then <laughs> maybe it would be me. <laughs> So listen, so the last time I stopped by Build Series, my friend Shannon Coffey took me camping and we shared some very, very intimate secrets. Take a look. Hi, I'm Shannon Coffey and I'm here at Monet Exchange. We're out here camping at Build Studio and the vibe is just right. So we're gonna share some camp confessions. Mm. One time, I was sending someone a booty pic and I noticed that I had a new mole over my butt cheek. And then I ended up having to get it removed because it was cancerous. So basically, sending nudes saved my life. <laughs> sending nudes saved my life. The first nude I ever sent was highly produced. It was in sepia tones. I need to know why sepia. <laughs> to give you the full fantasy. In like 2003, it was just very luxurious. When I was in high school, I went to school in New York City. I would sometimes lie and say I was going to school, but really go to my boyfriend's house in Harlem. Scandalous. No, I'm a bad girl. And he was a crip. He was in a gang. Whoa, okay. He also gave me, as a token of his love, he gave me this ring, a name ring that has my name on it. It says Kevin. That's so romantic. Actually, he gave it to me so I wouldn't tell anyone that we were hooking up. He was like, a dirty little secret. I'll tell you my dirty, dirty little, little secret. secret. Have you ever done drag? No, I haven't. Oh my god, I feel like you'll be a fierce and a really funny drag queen. Oh my gosh, that's like the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> like, I'm not even, like, I could cry. I think the first step will be getting a name. Because once you have the name, you'll get the power. I am the drag oracle. Tell me more about you, Shannon Coffee. Where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Oh my god, are you Puerto Rican? Yeah, I'm half. Para continuar tu nueva girl. What did you just say? Girl, I don't know what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you got me. Para continuar tu nueva girl. No me jorengue. Your drag name, Shannon, is going to be Liza with a D. Liza, last name with a D. You always go by Liza, but when you get a cast on season 24 of Drag Race, you're gonna be Liza with the D. And will you be there for me? I will absolutely not, but I will uh, <laughs> support you in spirit. I'm glad that you didn't lie to me. <laughs> a lot of people come on this show and they make a lot of promises. <laughs> we gotta go, but don't worry, Money Exchange. Everything we shared here is just between us. Okay, good. And the internet. You may know her as Samantha from Dear White People, but Logan Browning's latest film, The, the Perfection, drops tomorrow on Netflix. In this twisty horror thriller, a once promising music prodigy played by Allison Williams reconnects with her former mentors, only to find them taken with a talented new pupil. Everyone, please welcome Logan Browning! <laughs> oh, Logan, 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 Logan. I stand, I stand, I stand. I see you. Oh, well, thank Monet you. Queen. Thank you. First of all, you look incredible. Well, thank you. I had to show up for you. <laughs> you look at your hair. It's all. You have one of these sickest hair games, A, in the show on, on Dear White People, but in thank life you. on your Instagram. I'm like, I literally have screenshots of your Instagram, and I'm like, can you make me one of those? Please? I want that. I, I want that. that. <laughs> like, your hair today looks beautiful. Did you just thank yourself? Thank you. No, actually, my hairstylist for today, her name is Monet as well. Nuh uh. Yes, she is. Monet Artistry. She did my hair today. You see, I'm security here. I'm a hairstylist. I do everything here at Bill, okay? <laughs> um, so, dear white people, I get. I cannot tell you how much I love this show. You are so phenomenal in Dear White Thank People. You. Your character, Samantha, is just, she's that girl. <laughs> and you let the kids have it. How, this is, we're, we're, working, we're waiting for season three now. Right, right. Yeah. And um, can you tell us when it's coming? Uh, I have no idea when it's coming, so I can't tell you when it's coming. Like, they need, Netflix needs to tell me when it's coming, gotcha. but they probably won't because they know I'll leak it. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, we filmed season three and it's all about like spring awakening. Everybody's really coming into their own, mm -hmm. which is fun for all the characters um, who, you know, in the first two seasons, you're in a three week period where they're dealing with a lot of trauma and just insanity. So uh, 
It's refreshing. And three. the guys are so hot on, on you. They're beautiful. Every All these beautiful guy men. in that show, I'm like, I what I would not pay to. Uh, <laughs> if I had a million dollars, girl, I would be up on your set. Okay? And they're kind, like yeah. it's you know. You, are they kind? They they're silly. That's the one thing. They are they are downright goofy. Uh -huh. They play pranks, and I will say that Brandon, who plays Troy, is uh -huh. the prankiest of all. Is when he really? When you're across from him, when you're filming, he will, yes, I'm calling you out, Brandon. <laughs> uh, he will make faces. He's like, oh, that's hot. And you're like, ah, this is my coverage. It's a serious <laughs> scene. What are you doing? And also, the, the, the girls in the show, also, you guys you guys all seem so tight on in, in the show. How, are you guys all friends? Outside yes. So I've, Kiki? I have the best cast ever. Everyone is so immensely talented, mm -hmm. but they're also really thoughtful people. And um, and just highly intelligent. I, we all hang out. We're all in the group chat. I sure. won't tell you what the name is because it's got a cuss word in it. <laughs> it's Nick Avengers. <laughs> that is. So bad. You see, white people, you can laugh at that, okay? <laughs> this is sir, gentleman, he's like. <laughs> You can laugh, you can laugh. That was good, that was good. So speaking of the cast of your show, I want to play a little game with you, okay? I love games. Okay? okay, so the image is there. You can't see that screen, can you? Don't cheat. I won't look now. Oh, actually, you can look at it. Sorry, I fucked it up. You can look. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to have to guess who that is just by their torso, well, their shirtless bit. Literally, just in the quick time I switched my head, I know you exactly know? who it is. It's Brandon, obviously. God damn it. Okay, she got the first one. That is Brandon <laughs> Troy. I mean, look at that face, that body. Uh, and also, I love that he is in, in that in that episode in season two when he goes to like the gay party with uh, with with Lionel. It's yes. like, I want a straight man to go to a gay party with me. Yes, you know that that storyline meant so much to me because I feel like, well, like Lionel's storyline means so much to me because. Um, young black boys specifically deserve mm -hmm. to see themselves, young black gay boys specifically, yeah. deserve to see themselves represented on screen and, and not feel like they are wrong to dare to exist as they are. Yeah. And then the Troys of the world, those those most straight men, yes. need to not be afraid to be friends yes. and go out with their, with oh, their gay friends. It was an amazing storyline, immaculately done, and he was a great, 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 great role in that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one, let's pull the next one out. Okay, you can look. Oh. oh, this is from Instagram. Uh huh. Okay, I'll read or, you. I'll I'll read you some clues. Okay. I know exactly who it is. You know already. <laughs> because the person who this is, he's probably the most scandalous. Between him and Jaron, they are the most scandalous out of everyone. <sighs> it's Jamar. It is Jamar. Yeah. That's is that Jamar. weird that I know their bodies? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not I'm at all. judging me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he's he's like he's like the fun goofy one in the show. Jamar is also crazy. Like he's not crazy in real life. He's he's very he's scandalous. He's uh -huh. not afraid. I love that about him. He's not afraid to just show his body and his beauty. Okay, well I will definitely be hitting that follow button after the show. <laughs> okay, now last one. Can't wait. Look. What well, would the t the tattoo might reveal it for you now that you know who it is? Okay, so that's Duran. <laughs> Why, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, it's Duran. That's Duran, yeah, yeah, that is mine though. <laughs> I'm like, wait, why are you pausing? It's not you it's Duran. You are really good at this game. We should have made this hard. We should have pixelated or something. We, <laughs> we should have well, like the, the, the titties on the ankles or something like that, girl. <laughs> Well, that's one of the things I love about Dear White People is, like, we don't play, like, only the only girls. Only the girls. But we, men, show the chest, show the butt. Uh -huh. Everybody is an uh -huh. equal playing field here. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? I love that. Yeah. I love, 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 love that. Big so much for Logan Brown. She just won. Uh, thank you. We did it! <laughs> what kind of cheap? <laughs> you get 100. <laughs> you get 100. Oprah could never, okay? <laughs> never. <laughs> um, so we've got a clip from The Perfection. Let's take a look really quick. You want drama? Watch that other girl's mother in the blue dress. And the guy in the gray slacks. He's the father of the girl in the middle. There's something going on between them. 
can't help themselves. <laughs> and right in front of their spouses. Just watch. I first noticed during semifinals. It's kind of hilarious. Okay. Now, this movie has the most twists, turns, nooks, crannies I've ever seen in any film. Girl. You, like, can you, what can you tell us about this movie? Um, nothing, because it has so many twists and turns. It's Honestly, like, though. Yeah. How do you even talk about it? I don't. I just really sit here. I'm here just to look pretty. That's not true. <laughs> Nailed. I am here to give you... All of me. Uh -huh. That's not true either. This is how I talk about the movie. It is, it's, it, okay, it starts off very, it, it seems like a black swan, right? It uh -huh. seems like these, these women are in competition, and yes, um, that is what you're signing up for. It's two cellists. Um, Allison Williams' character is a cellist who um, was at the top of her game. She was a celebrity. Her mom gets sick, and she goes home to take care of her, and then my character, Lizzie, enters into this conservatory and becomes the celebrated cellist. And uh, when Charlotte, Allison's character's mom, passes away, she comes back into my life. And then I can't say anything else. It, like, I'm telling y'all, this movie is, gonna, is, is, gonna, is about to fuck you all the way up, OK? <laughs> it is so crazy. And you also work with Allison Williams, who is um, the crazy bitch from Get Out. <laughs> so honestly, on, so the whole time on set, I'll be, I'll be looking at her with one eye all the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Did you, did you guys have fun working together on the movie? Yeah, well, you know, when I first met Allison, I was like, we had this trust thing where we would, she would hand me her keys every time I saw her. No, <laughs> that did not happen. That did not happen. <laughs> no, Allison, honestly, is so incredible. She is obviously an ally and a champion. Yeah. From, you know, she, she was in that film and was amazing in it. Um, that film, Get Out. Uh, she was so kind. She's funny. She's intelligent. I I didn't know what to expect going in to meeting her, and I loved her. She's the best. Yeah. A class act. Why why this project? Because this is cause this, this is a little different for you. A horror like the horror thriller kind of genre. Yeah. Um, why I read the script and it was like something I'd never read before with all of the twists and turns and the way it was a, a two-hander between these two strong female characters and they had thoroughly developed storylines. But also, as Logan reading the script, I've never seen a woman who looks like me in a film like this playing this kind of a character. Yeah. And I feel like with us, we are, um, we're, we're kind of challenged with being always presentable and the queens that we are because history has ripped us to shreds. Mm -hmm. And so not often you see us in these roles where we're getting to kind of like lose our minds yeah. um, because when we are, it's usually in a way of um, de degradation. Yeah. Uh, so I love this because I, I just feel like women are going to be able to watch this and be like, oh, cool. I love the thriller genre, and now I get to see myself in a film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make some noise for that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, because the nature of the movie is so intense and so, like, like, like during, during scene, scenes, is it still, are, are y'all like, if someone just, I don't know, I'm not going to say something in the movie, someone just got a uh, toe... <laughs> Exploded off of someone's. That board. happens. That that does. Do happen. you guys stay in the moment in in, in, in the break, or are you like, oh, hey, girl, we'll anyway. You know oh my what god, I'm no, it's to kind of because it's hard to kind of be living that realm the whole time. It's yeah, no, you can't stay intense between scenes because you would die. Like we yeah. just don't, and um, we definitely are like you know on our phones looking at memes, laughing. Richard, our director, is hilarious. So yeah, no, we're not being serious. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I would like I'm method. <laughs> Yeah. Explode the toe again, please. You know, and that would be your right as a woman. And I will say, that is something I learned from Allison, is owning your space and yeah. owning your right to be a woman with an opinion on a set. Because oftentimes, we feel like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm grateful to be here. Let mm -hmm. me just do my job and go home. No. No, the men don't do that. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, if you wanted to be mad and show up and set and be worried about the toe, everything single day, <laughs> do it. You know what I mean? It's your right. No, so you, know, you play the cello. Do you play the cello in real life? I feel like looking at you, not knowing anything, I would be like, I feel like you play the cello, the piano. You you did cross cross stitching. You did cross country <laughs> triathlon. Do you play the cello in real life? Um, 
I do now. Oh, I word. did not before. Um, how, how long did you have to do? Did you have to practice before? Uh, I trained. I had about a month before we started filming to oh. train, and um, I was actually in Atlanta for um, the holidays, and so I found a woman. I made actually it was very specific. I wanted to find a black woman to be my teacher in LA when I went back to LA and in Atlanta because I thought that they were unicorns. I thought black women don't exist yeah. in the cello world, and they do. Well, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, so yeah, now I know how to play the cello. I'm not good. You were like, do, do re mi fa so la ti do? Um, uh, like if, if, if I went in my purse and pulled out a cello right now, <laughs> would you be able to play a scale for me? I, you, I, you better not have a cello. Uh, <laughs> let me answer this question well, very Logan, carefully. I wanna... <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? I, I played cello for a little bit in college. You did? I did, I did. Can you, can you imagine me in drag just like? Yo, that's amazing! <laughs> you are the unicorn that I thought didn't exist. That's amazing. Oh my god, the cello. Logan, I, I'm obsessed. I'm upset. I want to call you anytime in Atlanta and be like, Logan, let's go out to the club, girl. Please do. Also, your producer thought they could get rid of all the money and... <laughs> <laughs> Those are real. Those are real. Those are 100% real. Maybe we can go to Swinging Richards in Atlanta. I love Swinging Richards. I didn't know where I was going when I went to Swinging Richards, and I didn't understand the name until I was in Swinging Richards, and then I was like, Oh, I need oh. to hear this story. I need to hear this story. Are you going to Swinging Richards? <laughs> if, in case you don't know, Swinging Richards is a, um, a black male review show in Atlanta. <laughs> and it's Atlanta, so everything's swinging down there. Okay, yeah. girl? Everything. Yeah. I mean, for me, like, I haven't been to a lot of, um, you know, strip clubs. Well, male, it's like, male strip, strip, male strip like, I know, but male clubs are not really that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, I, I've never been, like, I haven't been to a lot of places like that. And so I went because it was my friend's birthday, and I remember I got a lap dance. And I, I <laughs> Could you imagine a little look around and get a lap dance, girl? Pick you up, flip you upside down? No, I was like, please, please just leave me in the chair. I'll, I'll just stay right here. But I remember his, like, there was a smell. Oh. Yeah. Wait, wait, good he smell or bad hard. smell? Oh, it wasn't a good smell. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was not a good smell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, was it, was it like Lionel, uh, Miss Thing before, or was it no? No, it was, it was very grody. But, oh, yeah. okay. Well, sometimes, you know, some people into that. But like, no shade to the whole establishment. It was yeah. just, I mean, I'm sure he was working hard. Yeah. You know? One time a friend of mine went to, um, uh, for their birthday, they had a party at a strip venue, and a woman uh, danced upon him, and her bottom was in his facial region. Mm -hmm. And um, cut to two days later, he got crabs in his beard. Oh. <laughs> Talk about the perfection, girl. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is a true story, by the way. I'm not fucking around. So anyway, oh my God. Logan, Logan, I love you. Please, I love please you come too. back please when it's time to be back. I'm here. so would, happy for you. I would love to have you back with your white people. When you guys come back and Thank talk. Thank you, please. Oh, well, you, Antoinette. Uh, have us all. Yeah, you know, the whole cast. Bill, we're doing it. <laughs> the whole cast of me. Yay. Thanks for Logan Browning, y'all. <laughs> oh, we didn't even. Oh, you're done. Congra let's say, let's say, um, congratulations to, and Congratulations to this moment for you. You deserve this, and cheers to all your future success. Oh, thank you, my dad. Mm. Those are good cocktails. It, it is. Yeah. Now, before we go, we've got a little something I like to call Monet Talks, okay? I'm about to let the state of Alabama have it. Y'all ready? <laughs> Alabama. Didn't think it was possible, but you found a way to out Florida, Florida. You successfully become the laughing stock of the United States and most of the free world. Apparently, we've all stepped into a DeLorean and have been transported to 1972. And as much as I enjoy the invention of the caftan, I don't enjoy this blatant attack on women's rights. Let's do some math, shall we? Here we go. In a year, if a woman has sex with 100 men, she can carry one full-term pregnancy. If a man walked around slinging his meat wad 100 times for a year, he can produce 100 little monsters who will ruin the entire second half of the Avengers for you by incessantly talking and kicking the back of your chair. <laughs> that happened to me. Here's an idea. How about you spend your time treating assault rifles like you do uteruses? Or better yet, talk to Tommy Loren. She's finally making sense these days. Gag. <sighs> This is not The Handmaid's Tale, and we don't want it to be. No one looks good in that fucking color, all right? 
Women's bodies are women's business. Get with it or get out. Thank you. Uh, Logan, thank you so much for being here. Everybody, make sure to check out The Perfection on Netflix this Friday. That's all for tonight. If you're in DC on Friday, I will be hosting Pride, and then I'm off to LA for the rest of the weekend, holding court, kissing babies, and knighting dogs at Dragon. Come back next Thursday and get your currency in check. Peace! <laughs>